Okay, I'd like to tell you about electric potential energy. And um, let's just talk about why you have electric potential energy in the first place. Let's look at a point charge. Here's a point charge Q1. It's positive and um, it's fixed there. So we, we've put a pin there and it's like fixed in some styrofoam. It's not allowed to move. There's no potential energy in the system yet, but if I bring another positive charge, let's say this yellow ball is positive. If I bring another positive charge here, then what will happen is um, the closer this gets to here, the more that's repelling that positive charge. So when I let go, the thing will fly that way. So, um, so if I bring it closer to here and I let go, it will zip that way. So that's potential energy. We say this ball, actually the system has potential energy. And so um, how do you calculate that? Okay, well, you calculate that with these equations. Or the, it's actually one equation. It's the work done by a conservative force will always equal the negative change in potential energy. The conservative force in this case is the electric force. So the work done by the electric force, this is just the, spe the specific case of that, the work done by the electric force is equal to the negative change in electric potential energy. Okay, so um, let's calculate out what that would be then if we put, if we have a positive charge here and um, we want to bring a charge from infinity all the way to here, that's going to take some work. The, the electrical force is going to do some work and let's calculate how much work that will be. So um, I'm going to bring that to here. This will be Q2. And Q2 is going to be um, a distance R0 from there. But it didn't start there. It's got potential energy there, but it started at infinity. And when I moved it in, I was doing work, but so was the electrical force. So I'm going to move this in at a... Uh, with my own force. It does not going to want to go there all by itself, but it's the electric, the work done by the electric force that I want to calculate. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, so the work done by the electric force is equal to the negative change in potential energy, electric potential energy. Now the work done by the electric force is um, the integral of the electric force dot dr. And I'm going to have it do work from infinity. We're going to start at infinity and we're going to go all the way to um, r naught. Okay, so um, this is a path integral. You're doing um, the work that you're calculating is a, along a path that the path starts at infinity and goes to R0. So let me draw you some of this path. Here's some of this path. It's just a bunch of little DRs. See those DRs? It's a bunch of little DRs. And we're coming from infinity all the way to this path at uh, stopping right there at R0. Okay, now the electrical force, say, for this little dr is um, this way. That's the electrical force. And it can be calculated using this equation. It's k, it's just Coulomb's law, q1, q2 over r squared. I hope you can read that. That's the electrical force. That should equal the negative change in potential energy, which I'm going to write as um, negative. And now the change in potential energy is u final minus u initial. Okay, well, let's substitute in for this electrical force. Let's substitute in the equation Coulomb's law, q1, q2 over r squared dot dr. And we're going from infinity to r naught. And that's going to equal, now, uh, do you see that at infinity, there is no potential energy? So our initial, this is this should say initial. So our initial potential energy is zero. So it's just negative U final. That's what, that's what this is going to give me, the potential energy when it's all the way at this location right, right here. When it's at that location. 
All right, so let's calculate that integral then. Okay, these are mainly constants in this integral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the constants, k, q1, q2, and then we're just left with, we're going to integrate from infinity to r0, and we're just left with r to the negative 2 dr, and that's equal to negative u final. Okay, moving right along. The value of this integral then is, uh, let's see, it's k, q1, q2. And um, the value of that integral is going to be r to the negative 1, and I need a negative 1 here. Do you want to take the derivative of this and see that it actually gives you what's in what the integrand is? Okay, so this is going to be um, infinity and r0. That's equal to negative u final. Take the derivative of that. Sure enough, you get r to the negative 2. Okay, moving along here. Um, let's... I'm going to pull that negative out. In fact, if I do pull that negative out, when I do, there's a negative here and a negative there. So that's just going to be k q1 q2. And then um, I'll substitute in these right away. This is 1 over r. So it'd be 1 over r0 minus 1 over infinity. And that's now equal to just u final, because I canceled, remember I canceled the two negative signs. So that's just equal to u final. Okay, well, 1 over infinity, when you divide any, you know, any finite number by infinity, it goes to 0. So 1 over infinity is 0. So what we have here is that the potential energy of that system is going to be just k, q1, q2, all over um, r naught. So that's what that's equal to, k, q1, q2 over r naught. If you remember, that's very similar to, for gravitational potential energy, negative g, m1, m2 over r naught. This one has a negative, and the reason that has a negative is because uh, the potential energy is the negative sign means that things are trapped, they're bound. But that positive charge in our original problem, that wasn't bound. When you let go of it, it took off to infinity. So it wasn't bound. Now if one of these is negative and the other's positive, do you see how then you have negative potential energy and you can be bound? Okay, lastly, uh, what... What do you do when you have several charges? Let's say you have a charge here, Q1, another charge, Q2. We'll make these all positive. And another charge, Q3. This system has a lot of potential energy, Q3. Let's say it's an equilateral, equilateral triangle, so they're all a distance r and naught away from each other. Okay, well, what do, you, what do you do then to get the potential energy of this system? And the answer is that you build it. You have to build that system and see how much energy has to get added as you build it. So I'm going to bring the first one there, to put Q1 there. It doesn't take any energy because you're not fighting to bring that one in. So Q1 you get for free. The next one, though, to bring Q2 there you're going to have to add some energy to that system. How much energy? You'll have to add the following energy. K, Q1, Q2 over R0. Okay. Now, to bring the, the third one in there, you're going to have to add energy because this one's here and energy because that one's there. So, to bring the third one there, the additional energy you're going to need is K... Q3 times Q1 over R0, this is R0 away, plus, this is R0 away too, plus K Q3 times Q2 over R0. So how much total energy did you use? All three of these combined. So the total energy of this system is, um, the total energy is going to be equal to um, K Q1 times Q2 over R0 plus K, Q3 
Q3 times Q1 over R0 plus KQ3 times Q2 over R0.